Hello, and welcome once again to Time Between Times Storytelling, a time for stories traditionally told. My name is Owen Staten, and every week I produce a video so that we can gather and listen to a tale traditionally told. A tale told in the old ways, a tale of legends, of magic, of fairies, of monsters, of all those things that live in our imagination that we can make real for just a short period of time. Thank you for joining me. Diolcho Galon. Our numbers grow and our gatherings grow ever bigger. Let us sit back. Let us relax. Let us leave behind the trials and tribulations of this terrible time and join here at the Time Between Times. Sit back and relax and know that you are here at the time when the veil between our world and the fairy world grows wafer, wafer thin. So thin that for just a few moments we can reach into their realm and for a few moments they can reach into ours. This is the time of magic. This is the time of lights in the sky. This is the time that people see ghosts. But we know we are safe. We can hear the howl of wolves. We can hear the growl of bears. But we are safe here at the time between times. And today we have a tale of one of the great heroes of Wales. A man called Owain Glyndwr. Many hundreds of years ago, he led a riotous rebellion against the English King Henry. Great battles were fought. Great skirmishes throughout the hills of Wales. After many victories, Owain was finally defeated and driven into hiding. A lonely figure, he walked the wild, wild roads of Wales. Would spend nights slept under trees, watching streams pass. A lonely figure, like a beggar, he would move from village to village, seeking shelter with supporters who had looked after him for many years. And his path drew him to Errari, where he had a friend called Rhys Goch Errari, Red Rhys of Snowdon, who lived in a farmhouse the foots of the mountains. There he could see the smoke coming out of his chimney and Owen made his way through the winding rainy night and looking around to make sure no one was watching for he was always certain that he would be betrayed, always certain that soldiers were following him. He knocked on the door only to find Rhys answering him. My lord, my lord, come on in, come on in and take shelter, said Rhys, sitting Owen by the fireplace and bringing him a hot broil of broth in order for him to eat. Shelter me for just one night, said Owen to Rhys. No longer, but if I am found here, you will be hanged. You can stay here as long as you want. Whether it be a day or a year, you can stay here, my lord. Days turned to weeks, weeks turned to months, and Owain regained his strength, grew strong like the Lord he was once more. But one day, as dawn broke over the mountains, Rhys opened the curtains and afar down the valley, he saw Henry's soldiers approaching the farm. To arms, my lord! To arms! We must fight or flee! But there are many of them and we are few. Stay here, said Owain to Rhys. Stay here, for this is not your fight. It is my fight, my lord, and I will come with you. Put on this cloak and let us make our way up the mountain away. Out of the back door of the farm they went, Owain and Rhys, cloaked and hooded, and started to make their way scampering up the far... up the mountain slopes of Moyle Hellog, one of the great mountains of Wales. Moyle Hebog, its slopes stretching to the sky. Moyle Hebog. It is said that only the tallest man could see his peaks. Moyle Hebog, where the eagles lived. They clambered and crawled and scampered and scrimed their way up the valley. The soldiers approached and they could see them in the house below and then they could see them pointing for they knew who they were after. 
The cries went up. There goes Glyndor! There goes Glyndor! And the soldiers started to chase after them, arrows flying through the sky and hitting off the rocks as they went. Owain oh, turned to Rhys. Let us split up, for they will not know who to chase. Both of them went either way, Owain oh, further up the slopes of Moyle Hebog, and Rhys into the pass of Abaglassin. The soldiers split after them, but then fate intervened as it often does, and Rhys, his hood, blew off his head, and his red hair was seen by all. That's not Glyndur, they cried, turning their attention to Owain. Some were so close they could almost touch him by now. And at one point, one grabbed his foot and Owain kicked it away, reaching onto a ledge. There he fought with a soldier, pushing him down the slopes where he tumbled, broken and battered, back down to the farmhouse. And still Owain climbed higher and higher and higher with the soldiers chasing him. At one point, one soldier jumped onto a ledge in front of Owain and their blades out they fought a great fight on the side of the mountain, swords clashing as the days grew long, for Owain was quite old by now and not as fleet of foot as he once was. Again he was victorious, and the soldier fell crashing down. At this point an arrow flew over his shoulder and clanged into the stone behind him, and still he climbed and climbed, until the sergeant of the soldiers reached a ledge just as Owain made it, and again their swords were brandished. Again their swords were brandished, and again they clanged out. Great battle, echoing through the valleys. At this point, the sun seemed to hide and hide behind a cloud. At this point, a storm started to break over the hillside, and the thunder roared out like drums from the gods in the sky. And still they fought above the valley, until Owain was triumphant again, and he severed the head of the soldier sergeant who tumbled down all the way down the hillside far below. The remaining soldiers took heed for now they felt that this was indeed a great warrior and they did not want to pursue him any further. They saw the figure climb to the top of Moyle Hebog and stand on his peak with his arms raised, his sword held high and his armour shining in the day. And they turned around and went back to their king, saying they could not find the great lord. And they were right, for after that no one ever saw Owain again. He vanished into the hills, he vanished into the valleys, he vanished into the caves and caverns of Wales was never seen again. However, this year the Mountaineer's Guide to Wales was brought out and in the entry pertaining to Moyle Hebog there is a part of the mountain now known as the Pass of Glyndur. It's 250 feet high of sheer cliff face but only attempted by the greatest of mountaineers. And there at the bottom, recorded in a book, the first ascent is marked as being by Owain Glyndur in the year 1400. So the tale, my friends, must be true. <laughs> For it is recorded as having done the first ascent. That is the tale of the escape of Owain Glyndur. I hope you enjoyed it, my friends. I hope you enjoyed it and will tell your friends about this time that we gather at the time between times. I hope you enjoyed a traditional tale traditionally told. I hope your week will be well and you will be happy and hale and healthy. Join me again whenever you can. Please like or subscribe to the videos. Please leave a comment and tell me which you enjoy and any tales you would like to see. My name is Owen, and this is Time Between Times Storytelling. Thank you very much for listening. Diolch am Grandor, and I will see you again soon. Hwyl fawr.